I will next explain the idea of regression analysis. Regression analysis is one of the most commonly used analysis tools in quantitative research and most applications of quantitative techniques can be thought of as special cases or extensions of this particular analysis. The regression analysis results are typically presented like as a table like this. So here we have four different regression models, we have different regression coefficients, we have different model indices and uh, there are certain assumptions behind this table that you need to understand and also you need to understand what the numbers tell us. And we will be looking at this kind of tables uh, in the next couple of videos but I will first explain what is the regression analysis actually about. So in a regression analysis we have uh, two kinds of variables. We have one dependent variable that we want to explain. For example, company's profitability, ROA, could be a dependent variable. Then we have multiple independent variables. The independent variables are variables that we use to explain the dependent variable. For example, we could have CEO gender and company size and company industry. Then regression analysis answers the question how much do these variables together explain the variation of the dependent variable and which ones of the variables are the most important ones for explaining that. So regression analysis allows us to control for alternate explanations for an observed correlation. In the case of the, uh, the paper by Heckman from that from which the pa uh, previous table was from, the uh, idea they explained patient satisfaction scores with for example physician productivity, physician quality and physician accessibility. So you have one thing that you explain with multiple things to see which one of those multiple potential explanatory variables actually matters. Idea of regression analysis is commonly presented as a Venn diagram. This Venn diagram is useful for illustrating some properties of regression analysis but it doesn't illustrate all the properties. But it's a good starting point nevertheless. So the idea of these uh, circles here is that this circle here presents uh, the variation of company performance or return on assets. So this is the variation of, of the dependent variable. This is the variation of the independent variable that we're interested in, which in this case is the CEO gender. And this is the variation in company size. Now we are interested in how much of this co-variation or correlation between gender and performance is actually due to gender and how much is due to uh, the effects of size because size and gender are correlated. So we could say that the correlation between gender and performance is partly due to presumed causal in influence of CO gender on performance and partly because smaller companies tend to be more profitable, this correlation here, and also because smaller companies tend to be more likely to hire women CEOs, which is this correlation here. Now we want to use regression analysis to parcel out this part that is shared by gender and size and performance to get the unique effect of performance. So we could think of regression analysis as doing something like this. So it eliminates the effect of company size on the relationship between gender and performance. Of course, we are not really limited to just two dependent independent variables. We can have multiple competing explanations for the dependent variable in the model. Typically, we would have in the ballpark of 10 or 20 variables. So we can add, take additional bytes away to get a, a cleaner estimate of this correlation between gender and performance that is free of any third causes. Ultimately, we would get uh, a clean causal effect between gender and performance if we have included all relevant controls to the, to the model. That of course is easier said than done. Regression analysis is a, a statistical model and a model in, is an equation. So whenever you hear a, a, the term model it means that there is uh, some math and model can also be presented as a path diagram like this. I will first talk about uh, the path diagram. So the path diagram here has one independent one dependent variable y, three independent variables x, and the x's are independent. They're allowed to be freely correlated. Free correlation is this uh, 
double-headed curved arrow means that they are, we don't really care about how these different explanatory variables usually denoted with x are related but we are interested in estimating how they uh, explain or predict the dependent variable y. The strength of influence of each variable is quantified by a regression coefficient beta. So we have uh, one beta for each x here. Then uh, we have beta zero or the intercept which tells us the base level of y when all of these, ba these explanatory or independent variables are at zero. So and then we have some variation u that the model doesn't explain. So this is remaining variation that is not explained by the model. So well, let's say that the, the model explains 20% of the variation of the dependent variable, which is fairly typical for business research. Then the unexplained variation would account for 80% uh, of the true variation of y in the data. In equation form, we can see that our uh, the y here is a weighted sum of the x's and the weights are the regression coefficients. And each of these regression coefficients quantify what is the influence of one variable of one of the independent variables on the dependent variable. So for example, we can model patient satisfaction as a weighted sum of physics and productivity, physics and quality, physics and accessibility, and some independent, some are variation that the model doesn't explain. What's important to understand is that these effects are, are independent. So when, when x increases one unit, then that beta tells what is the, uh, the, the effect of one unit increase independently of the other variables. And also uh, they are linear so that we always assume that our one in unit increase in x is always associated with the same amount of increase in y, which is quantified by, by the beta. Graphically, regression analysis can be understood as a line. And uh, I will show you two variate regression analysis. This is also called as the simple regression because we have only one independent variable. So here the independent variable is, uh, let's, just, let's say it's years of education, for example. And this dependent variable here is, let's say it's salary. And uh, we are interested in knowing what is the linear relationship? So what's the, uh, the best line that explains this data? So regression analysis in this simple regression with one independent variable, basically it, it, you can think of it as, as plotting all the data as a scatter plot here. We will show some scatter plots a bit later and then draw a line through the data. So that gives us the regression line. These are uh, the slope of this line here, how strongly it goes up or down is quantified by the regression coefficient. We make some assumptions when we run a regression analysis. One of the, uh, the key assumptions in, in justifying regression analysis is that these observations then are equally and normally distributed on the regression line. So that when we have a regression line here, most likely case is that the observations are close to the li line and there, but there can be some observations that are far from the line but they should be relatively rare.